This is the Three Rivers Manufacturing or TRM Shadow. And it is the most interesting, but probably least useful knife that TRM makes. This knife, like all TRMs, is made in their factory in Massachusetts, USA. Blade here is 20 CV with 90,000 stock, which is quite thin. Huge sheep's foot blade here. Sheep's foot because you got this little curve here. Um, it's a bit of a rising sheep's foot, so it doesn't come straight across. So you do have a bit of a rising tip there, which makes it a little more versatile. Um, four ounces. So it is a little bit chunky, part, largely because it's so tall. Um, and this is a big blade. It's thin, but it's a big blade. And this comes in at about $300. Now you see that $300 between the American manufacturing and just the finishing. And if you know TRM, you know they do good work. Everything is finished very well on the blade. You've got a nice plunge. You've got a nice even grind here, a great stone wash. Very solid factory edges, not exceptional, but solid. Even blade stock, a little bit of crowning on the spine there, or just rounding on the edge. Honestly, the stone wash probably does that. The machining on the handles is fantastic. These are black G10. You can also get it in OD green or Concord grape micarta. But you can see here, when you look closely at the handles, everything is pretty much just right. There's a little extra chamfer there for your, for your uh, finger. We'll go with that. We'll talk about that in the ergonomics, but there's a contour on the whole handle and all the edges are just very nicely done. This is flush here. There's lots of little machining details on where this lock interface comes out here. Your little backspacer, your G10 backspacer meets the two scales very nicely. You've got additional, you know, fullers here for lack of a better term for grip. It's just a nicely made handle. And then you've got the river lock, which is TRM's take on a bar style lock or an axis lock. You got an omega spring in here. When you pull this bar back, the blade will fall. And when you try to open it, you can see here that that little bar moves when I try to open it. That's what provides your detent. It's a bit of a springier detent. You overcome that detent and it flies out. So this is a very fidgety knife design as all bar locks are. Very easy to operate one-handed, very secure. You know, bar locks, despite being quite fidgety, they can take a lot of abuse. Benchmade has shown that for years. And the clip is ambidextrous, and in fact, this whole knife is ambidextrous because you can operate that bar lock from both sides easily. One other detail just to note here, well, you've got your seashell detailing on the pivot. TRM does that on their shadows. It's just a nice little visual touch. And then the studs here are TRM's newest thumb studs. They started doing these in 2023. This is their old thumb stud design, which used to be these rounded ones. These were a little harder to get your finger on. These are much more like Chris Reeve thumb studs, and they are objectively better. They are easier to get your fingers onto. They are without wearing on your fingers. You know, you just, the thumb stud position is very natural. This flies out very easily. The action is just great on this. And this thumb stud really does step it up. So if you can get one with these newer thumb studs, it's a significant improvement. One other thing to know about their implementation of the bar lock, if you look from the top, this bar lock sticks way out. And you know, you can also, you can, you've got that screw there. Um, I might even be able to adjust that. That might be a little out now, but this bar lock sticks way out from the handle. And that makes it very easy to pull, very easy to actuate. And this is, if I compare this to a Benchmade or compare this to a Hogue Ritter here, you can see the bar lock sticks out far less and these thumb studs stick out far less from the handle on the Hogue than they do, or at least these thumb studs from the blade, than they do in the Shadow. Compare these right there. This knife, the Shadow, is easier to actuate. I like this implementation of the bar lock better than I do in the Hogue. We'll be comparing these knives again in a little bit. But TRM has done the bar lock exceptionally well. There is well, there's the tiniest bit of play if I really try to crank it, but I'm not even sure if that's not just me futzing with the knife. I have never felt play in use with this knife, and I've owned a couple shadows, and none of them have ever had play for me. Some of their earlier shadows did have issues with play. That was why it took them a year or two to start rolling these out at scale. But these days, TRM shadows are rock solid. This is a great implementation of the bar lock. It's just, it's solid. 
Last little detail when we're talking through, you know, what's in this knife. Ergonomically, quite neutral. You've got a big sweep across the back here. You know, your palm just rides along that back very easily. There's no thumb ramp, so your thumb slides right up to the top of the blade. A little bit of a hump on the bottom here. Pretty neutral in general. The, the handle narrows toward the back, which does make it very easy and natural to grip on. And you've got a great 50-50 choil here, where the choil is half on the blade, half on the handle. It gives you plenty of space for your finger. And because of how these handles are contoured, and because the blade is still relatively thick, all considering right there, it's just a very comfortable choil to use. And this feels very easy and natural on the hand. It feels like even more than a lot of knives that have choils, this forward grip with your front finger in the choil and your thumb on top of the blade here, even though there isn't jimping, because the way this handle is designed, this feels very natural, very secure. This is great. And then you've got this big old blade <clears throat> sitting right there, ready to do work. So that is great. The handle design is great. We'll get into the blade design in a second. But from an implementation perspective, TRM accomplished everything that they set out to do on this knife. And when you really break it down into its parts, you can see why this is a $300 knife. The level of complexity of machining with the handle contouring, with the you know custom thuds and custom bar lock implementation, things like that, this, when it's made in the USA, $300 feels justified for this. And the fact is, if I compare this to a Hogue or I compare this to my Benchmates, I don't have any Benchmates right now, but I've owned a lot in the past. This feels substantially more refined and just finished than anything from Hogue does. This feels like a higher end knife. Everything fits together a little bit better. The edges on the blade are knocked down a little bit better. The stone wash is a little bit nicer. The contouring on the handle is less rough. The pivot, you know, that seashell design on the pivot, the, you know, custom studs and all that. I guess the Hogue has custom studs too, but these are just a little bit nicer manufactured. Everything is just nicer, nicer to the eye, nicer to the hand. You can see why the shadow costs more. Now, using it is where I've been a little bit disappointed with the shadow. So I am a fan of TRM. Let's get that out of the way because not everybody, a lot of people are, but not everybody is. I've got a Neutron. I've got an Atom here. All of them have this 90,000 stock. And obviously your Neutron is your bitty boy and your Atom is your big boy. And the shadow in terms of blade length sits right in the middle. These, the Neutron and Atom, are fantastic knives, and they're amazing user knives. And that's for two reasons. They cut like crazy. I guess three reasons. They cut like crazy. They've got a very agile profile. Because of this narrow handle design, they can go anywhere you want to, especially out at this tip. I can get my Neutron anywhere very easily. It kind of disappears in my hand, and it's just, it's an agile little blade. I don't notice it in my pocket. I can pull it out. I can stick it anywhere I need a knife. It cuts things great because of that edge. It's just, it's super easy and convenient. It's a very useful knife. The Atom is the same thing scaled up. The Shadow is, you know, TRM has described this as the bigger brother of the Nerd. The Shadow, you can see the comparison here, has a much, it's a much taller design. It's a much taller handle and it's a much taller blade. Um, it also ends up feeling, even though it isn't really thicker, I mean, it's a little bit, actually, no, it's more thicker than I thought. Okay, no, it is quite a bit thicker. It's thicker than the Atom and the Neutron. It's also heavier. And it feels thicker. Because it is taller, and you really see that when I fold these up. When I fold the three of these knives up, you can see that when you compare the Atom to the Shadow, which have about the same blade length, the Shadow ends up taking up way more real estate in your pocket than the Atom does. It feels much bigger. This Atom, part of the reason the Atom is so awesome is because you're getting three and a half inches of blade, give or take, in about as small of a profile in your pocket as you can safely get three and a half inches of blade. The Shadow feels like a much bigger knife in the pocket. I'll move these away and, you know, get my PM2 out here. 
the shadow is almost as big in the pocket as the PM2. It's almost as thick in the pocket. Actually, it's, yeah, it's almost exactly, if anything, it's slightly thicker in the pocket than the PM2. And it's about the same weight as the PM2. But for the PM2, you're getting a knife that has much thicker blade stock, so it's not going to cut as well at the edge. But because it's got much thicker blade stock, you can beat on this guy. This one, 3.9 ounces, feels more justified for a heavier duty, harder use knife. This guy, you're carrying a four ounce, relatively chunky knife for 90,000 thick of 20 C CV, which is both a blade thickness and a steel that is great, great edge retention, great corrosion resistance, but not something you want to beat on. If I've got to cut through, you know, nasty stuff, or if I've got to, you know, slam this through, you know, a, a, a couple boxes that I've got a hard time getting through, or it's, you know, wet, nasty cardboard, or I've got to cut a carpet or something like that, this isn't really the knife that I would want to go to just because of that blade stock, because of how thin it is. Um, the 20 CV, it would probably do just fine. But the point I'm trying to make here is this is a lighter duty knife than the PM2 that is not as capable on the harder use end of things. And conversely, it's about as capable as the Atom while taking up way more space in your pocket and feeling much larger. And now the one argument might be, well, is it ergonomically better? The ergonomics are great, but it does take up a lot of your hand. The ergonomics on the Atom are similarly great. You know, the way that they have designed this handle, the way they've designed the 50-50 trail on the Atom, it's the ergonomics to me are just as good. Which brings us to the real downside, because all of this before has been opinions you could have about the Shadow. But the downside when I compare the Shadow and the Atom does come down to this blade and the way the blade is designed. You've got a huge tall blade with your tip basically even with the pivot here. And with the Atom and with what TRM has historically done, even with a lot of knives, I'll bring out my Nkosi here. This is a tall blade by knife standards here on the Shadow. You know, if you bring out the Ritter, Ritter Hogue, it's similar to the Ritter Hogue, but that one's got a bit of a higher tip there. It's a bit more of a traditional drop point. This blade, because it is so tall, can actually be a little difficult to navigate around stuff. You need a lot of space because it's even tall, pretty much out to the tip. You need a lot of space to get this blade into stuff. I can't stick this blade into small spaces. I can't get it into little crevices. If I want to start a cut, I need an inch and a half of space. Yeah, actually, well, let's, let's call it an inch. I need a full inch of space above whatever I'm cutting or free of wherever I'm cutting to get this into the cut. And as I start to pass it through material, it's not like it's thick stock. It's not like I'm fighting against the stock, but I am, because I'm trying to pass this whole sheet of metal through the material, it's, it's giving me less agility. I'm less able to easily move this blade or rotate it as I'm cutting. It just feels less agile as I'm cutting because this blade is so tall and you're not even really getting a benefit at the edge for it. The theoretical benefit of a tall blade like this is that TRM should have been able to make a screaming sharp edge on this one because they've got all this height to drop from the same stock as the Atom down to this edge. And so this should be insanely thin behind the edge. And it's not. It's just thin. It's about as thin behind the edge as the Atom. Like the, the actual sharpness at the blade edge in the Shadow and the Atom, in my experience, has been in use, virtually identical, indistinguishable. <clears throat> And so my problem with the shadow in use, and this is a bit of, you know, a problem that TRM has made from themselves because their first two models, the Atom and the Neutron, were so exceptional. There, I do not see any actual performance benefit in the shadow over the Atom. And yet, it's bigger, it's heavier, it's more awkward to get the blade where I need it to be. I don't have this wonderful thin little tip I don't feel like I'm as close to the blade edge with this. You know, even when I go up with a pinch grip here, it's comfortable in the hand. I've got control in the handle, but I'm still not as close to the edge as I would like to be. 
again, if I compare it to the Atom, I'm right on that blade edge. You know, I'm basically holding the blade edge. And even when I'm holding it in my normal grip here, I'm close to that whole edge. I've got control over that edge. This one, the edge and the blade is not as easy to control as the Atom. It just ends up feeling like more of a big, chunky, awkward knife when you're actually using it, in my experience, compared to other things that TRM has made. Now, the better comparison might be this Hoag Ritter right here, because I think this is really what TRM was probably looking at in terms of design philosophy and, you know, where they were comparing when they were figuring out how to scale up the Nerd and choosing to scale it up this large. It's very similar in overall size and profile to your Ritter Hoag, which has long been one of the most popular bench-made alternatives when you want this Axis lock here. And the Ritter Hogue is a great knife. And what the Ritter Hogue does really well, and a lot of it has to do with this very natural, traditional drop point blade. This is a blade that's relatively thin, but it's got this fat contoured handle. And this is something that can beat way above its weight, the Ritter Hogue. And that's why a lot of people like it. This is a knife that looks, when you look at the blade stock, and when you look at sort of the design of it, it doesn't look like a hard use knife, but then when you grip it in your hand, I mean, the 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 original name, I mean, this was the Griptelian. This is basically a Griptelium. It's called the Griptelium for a reason. With this gripping up here, this grip back here, it's as secure as any knife you're going to get. You can wail on this thing. This thing doesn't, the shadow doesn't have nearly that level of grip. It's got thinner stock and this blade shape is just a little bit less natural than the drop point that the Ritter Hoke has. And so for harder use tasks, it seems to fall short compared to the Ritter Hoke. The manufacturing is way better. The finishing is way nicer. This is a nicer knife, but if I'm going to beat on something, if I'm going to be using a knife in the muck all day, or if I'm going to be, you know, doing home improvement tasks, stuff like that, I'm choosing the Hoke over the shadow 10 times out of 10. And that's a combination of handle details and blade details. And so that's kind of the problem with where the shadow sits. This is the third shadow I've owned. I bought and sold the shadow twice. And this is my favorite because of this new thumb stud. The new thumb stud is a major improvement, but the shadow, it's hard to justify from a utilitarian perspective. I don't quite know what job this knife does better than other alternatives that I could get. If I want a knife of this size from TRM, get the Atom. Because for the EDC tasks that TRM knives excel at and that are designed to excel at, they're designed to be thin, easily pocketable knives with wicked sharp edges that excel at your everyday carry tasks. The Shadow is just worse at that stuff than the Atom. And even though the bar lock, the river lock here is executed extremely well, it's not like the liner lock on the Atom was bad. The liner lock on the Atom is great. And unless you really, really want that bar lock, that's the only way that I think the shadow is better than the Atom. And honestly, that's a matter of opinion. It's not a matter of better or worse. And it's for a knife that is more expensive and I think less capable in terms of both the handle and the blade than the Atom. And if you want it for harder use, just get a Ritter Hoag. If you want a hard use TRM, this is not it. It's not designed to be. The handle does not provide the level of grip and traction. It's smooth. You know, this is nicely contoured. Again, nicely done, nicely manufactured, smooth everywhere. But smooth everywhere means just doesn't give you the kind of grip. There's no jimping. This doesn't lock your hand in like a Ritter Hoag or a Benchmade Griptilian does. It's not really meant to. That's not what they're trying to do. But don't look at this. You know, if you look at the profile, you look at the weight, you think, oh, this might be a hard use TRM. It's not. And then you combine that with the fact that the Ritter Hogue is also made in the USA and is about 120 bucks cheaper and has, while a less elegant rendition of the bar lock, it's just as good. It feels just as nice. It opens and closes just as easily. It's just as secure. If you want hard use, get a Ritter Hogue. And so that's where I end up with the Shadow. It's cool, it's fun, and it's 
objectively a very well-made knife for $300. I can see where the $300 is in here. And it's cool that TRM did it. And I like the idea of TRM doing a bigger nerd. I like them having these two lines. And you know, you've got your nerd line. I don't have a nerd with me now, but I have owned nerds before. And you've got your Neutron Atom line. That's great. That's a great way for them to build their, build their brand. But I don't think they really nailed doing a bigger nerd with the Shadow. I think they kind of ended up in a no man's land where they have a knife that is less good than knives they already sell at EDC tasks and a knife that also is not robust enough to really progress to those harder use tasks. And because of this big thick blade, it's just a little more awkward to use and takes up more space in the pocket. It's thicker. I just, I can't see any reason to choose the shadow over the Atom or Neutron unless you really like the aesthetics, really like the design, or really want that river lock. So if you want a fun fidgety knife that happens to be made in the USA and you want one of the best made bar lock designs in America right now, this is a great option. You will be very happy with it, but don't buy this because you think it is a better utilitarian knife than other options on the market. Buy this for the, for the aesthetics, buy this to appreciate the quality of manufacturing and to appreciate what TRM is doing here. Those are great reasons to buy the Shadow. But I think to make the best version of the big nerd, there's probably another iteration coming down the line here. Hope you found this to be a good use of your time. Hope I didn't waste your time and I will see you again soon.